investing in Chinese stocks. And I guess this ties into the whole Evergrande fiasco. I know people were saying this is going to be the next Lehman Brothers. Do you have any thoughts on that? And, you know, do you think this is uh, going to hurt the global markets? Well, as far as investing in Chinese stocks, I'll tell you right now, I do not invest in any Chinese stock, whether it's Alibaba or any other company. Uh, I don't believe in Chinese stocks. Um, and the reason for that is I don't believe in the Chinese government. I believe that every that the majority, I just do not trust any Chinese corporation, even if it is Alibaba. Uh, I don't trust in their reporting. Uh, I don't like the risks associated with, with China uh, and their uh, lack of transparency in everything. And I believe that their companies may be operating that way. And then finally is if I can get similar returns in U.S. equities or other countries' equities, why do I need China? There's There are thousands and thousands and thousands of opportunities out there that can provide similar risk return ratios, and in my opinion, less risk uh, with greater return, uh, because I, I have just a bad feeling about China. I have a bad feeling about, uh, um, and this isn't now go, what's going on now with China and all that, or, or all this COVID stuff going on. This has always been my belief. I never believed in in, uh, in investing in Chinese companies for as long as I've been in, 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 in this industry. Um, just because mainly for that reason, uh, only, you know, I've seen a lot of Chinese companies just, um, you know, manipulated and, uh, you know, go under because of false reporting. I, it, it's, it's not worth it to me. It's not worth it. You know, it, why do I need to chase a 15, 20, 50% return in China when I can go out and you know, find similar stocks, you know, with the same high risk reward ratio here. I, I don't need, I don't need the extra risk. Uh, as far as the Evergrande thing, uh, I'm hearing mixed reports, um, you know, uh, listening to the news. Some, the, the majority of geniuses on Wall Street are saying that, no, they do not believe it's a, it's a Lehman moment. They do not believe that this is going to have a ripple effect across the globe. They think it's going to be contained to China. Uh, and they, you know, they also believe that uh, they don't believe that China is going to let it fail uh, because they have too much outstanding debt and it'll probably put a dent in China's economy somewhere. So uh, one way or another, they, you know, from what I'm hearing on the street, uh, it's, it's a non-issue across the globe. It's going to have, you know, if anything bad happens to the company, it's going to have an initial negative impact to, uh, world markets, uh, but then recover from there. As you saw in today, I don't know if you saw today, uh, you know, the markets are, were up almost 500 points. Now the Dow was up almost 500 and, and, uh, uh, the NASDAQ, everything was up very strong today, which is, you know, a good sign. I think the amount of money they were going to default on, I believe, is three hundred billion, which sounds like a lot, but at the same time, I mean, with the amount of money the Federal Reserve uh, prints on a, that's like a slow day for them. I, I, I would agree that I don't think it's anywhere near as big as you know an 08 scenario, 09, and at worst, I know that there's you know banks that have bought their bonds and stuff, so I could see a, a small impact, but. Well, this is this is completely different than what happened here. What happened here was an asset bubble that just burst because the assets that these that Lehman was holding and that Morgan and and all of these giants Merrill Lynch were worthless. They were literally worthless. Okay, and they they were illiquid assets that they were holding, and they were on the books and they were marking them to face value instead of market value. And the market value was crap. The market value is nothing. So this is a little bit different. This is that the company's over leveraged uh, and may or may not meet its debt obligation. You see what I'm saying? Where back then, you know, uh, the, one of the reasons that eventually led to the company's not meeting its debt obligations because its stocks tanked and its currency, the values of the companies just collapsed and dried up in general, it was just a, 
a, a snowball effect that crippled everything. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a different scenario. You know, I have a, I did buy some Alibaba shares, but I made it, it's around 1% of my total portfolio. Right. So right. I, I agree with you. I mean, there's a, uh, and I, that's definitely the market sentiment right, right. now. And a lot, you know, a lot of people just feel the same way, just stay away. And I, and it makes sense. I mean, every, every week it's like the Chinese communist party is, you know, doing something new. They do whatever they right. please. They made Alibaba give, I think $20 billion away. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely, I don't, I don't see the value in it. I don't see the, I don't, yeah. I don't see any, any value, any reason to buy any Chinese stock. Never did and probably never will. Not worth it. Definitely not a, a bad approach. And then especially think of things like a uh, locked in coffee, yeah. you know, that's a recent example yeah. of cooking the books. Yep. 